Today I'm going to run through a few features of power meters that you may have access to but haven't quite looked into. That is both pedal smoothness and torque effectiveness. There's also cycling dynamics but at the moment that's limited to Garmin Vector pedals and soon to be the Favero Asioma pedals as they have just been certified for cycling dynamics. If you have a power meter on your bike and you've been surfing the data fields to set up on here, you may have come across a number of fields that aren't in the user manual, because we all read the user manual, right? I'm only kidding, most power meters don't come with a user manual. Or if you're like me, you just set up the three second average and away you go, that's it. Well, since 2012, the Ant Plus power meter spec actually has both torque effectiveness and pedal smoothness as a metric inside that data. So it's likely you've already got these features enabled, you just probably don't have them on screen. Today I'm gonna to run through exactly what they are and what they mean in relation to your power meter and the information displayed. First up today, pedal smoothness presented in a percentage and I call it the are you a motor metric. And if you're a human, you're really not a motor. This metric measures the force applied to the pedal stroke the whole way around the 360. The graph here gives you a good indication of what that's about. And this is not to be confused with someone looking smooth on the pedals. Somebody looking smooth on the pedals or looking fluid on a bike is very different to being 100% smooth or mostly smooth on the pedals with this metric. So it's a little confusing here. Somebody pedaling at 100% smoothness doesn't look very good on a bike. Numbers between 25 and 40% are probably what humans should be aiming for. If you're a motor, you should be aiming for 100% in pedal smoothness. Now look, this does change based on cadence, terrain, and of course, your pedaling style. Okay, jumping on the bike here to have a look at pedal smoothness. I'm just tapping along here easy at 140 watts. And you can see my pedal smoothness is rated between 20 and 21% with both left and right. Now I'll up the speed a little bit on that. And my smoothness doesn't change a lot, but that's just riding along. To me, feeling smooth on the pedals. But you can see there that metric doesn't really indicate that I'm motor smooth. Now switching to a bigger gear to simulate an uphill. So slower RPM, just a little bit. Hill climb. Smoothness goes up just a little bit, but it's still nowhere near 100%. Now for me to try and artificially make 100% smoothness, I will try and apply force. This does get uncomfortable as I push in full circles. Not even topping out at 40% motor-like. So, and that's very uncomfortable to just try and do that. Pushing over top, pulling back and pulling up, just not efficient. So pedal smoothness, typically for me, as I change down here, coming back into about 20 to 25%. Now over to torque effectiveness. Now torque effectiveness is presented as a percentage and measures how much of your effort is effective in pushing you forward on the bike and how much is not propelling you forward, any negative force on the pedal. The little graph here indicates it really well what's going on here. The red section, you don't want to put any pressure on the pedal when it's coming up because that's not effective, it's not pushing you forward, and that's what this percentage will give you. Numbers between 75 and 100 are uh, seen on head units if you've got a good pedal stroke. That will change based on the terrain, again, your cadence and your fatigue levels. I think where this is most evident is if you're used to being clipped into pedals and you move to a flat pedal bike, your upstroke up will be a little bit wonkier as a start. You'll unload your leg and you'll have no grip on the pedal. So torque effectiveness or torque efficiency, it really, really improves when you're clipped into the pedals. And that's why we use those kind of pedals for long rides, trainings, and races. Okay, on to torque effectiveness. So how much of my effort is pushing the bike forward and how much is not pushing the bike forward? And just pedaling along here, 80 RPM, 160 watts, you can see 77, 78% effective. If I start lifting my legs, really putting an effort to lift my legs up, that becomes a lot more effective. So 
So unweighting my leg as it comes up over. It's not something I really think about on the bike though a lot. But just back to pedaling along. 90 RPM. But if we were to throw in a big gear effort in, and really go hard on the pedals. Once it comes back, we can see there we're very efficient or effective. 95% big gearing it. Ninety-eight, ninety-seven, looking good. So those numbers do change quite a lot based on the effort you're doing, but just cruising along to the shops, not very effective. And speaking of going to the shops, let's go some uh, flat pedal simulation here with no clip-ins in my running shoes. And we'll have a look at the torque effectiveness of what I can reach in these shoes. So just riding along, similar. I can feel myself unweighting my leg like I do with pedals that are clipped in, or shoes that are clipped in. Let's try the 400 watt section again in these shoes. Not quite my 98% there, so a few percent lost using runners. Okay, so that covers torque effectiveness and pedal smoothness and what they are. The next question is, are they useful and how can they be used? Well, for me in the Llama Lab, it's kind of handy to have them on the screen just as a bit of a distraction because I'm sitting on the ergo going nowhere. And somebody over on Slow Twitch did say they could be a good indication of fatigue levels for longer events such as Ironman or triathlon. Having said that, the school is still out, so we're still not quite sure of the usefulness of this. If you're really wonky on the pedals or you do fatigue during a ride, that would be a good indicator of what's going on. But unless we know what we're looking at and know how to use that, they're not going to be of much use. Alrighty, that's it for today on those two additional metrics, which have been around a long time, but we're just not quite using them to their full potential, if they have potential. Let me know below if you have those on screen and how you use that information. Stay tuned, coming up I'll be looking into cycling dynamics, which takes all of this to the next level. Alright, thanks for watching.